Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 6. Four people remained behind bars tonight surrounding the grisly murder of 19-year-old Destiny Avery. Ethan Broad is charged with two counts of second-degree murder after authorities say he admitted to killing Avery, cutting up her body and throwing it in the trash. Andrea Payne, David Erno, and Brandon Erbstosser are each charged with helping to cover the murder up. Earlier this week, we told you Broad was classified as incapacitated, spending eight years in Catholic Charities Guardianship Program until being terminated last November. Tonight, Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter Bailey Hurley talked with Andrea Payne's mother, who says the system failed everyone involved. It's a story you'll only see on Valley News Live. With difficulties in school and overall behavioral delays, Kristen Payne says her daughter has been struggling most of her life. But besides tailored help in the classroom, she says not much else could be done. She's borderline. She rides the fence post and... This is where the problem is. This is what she, I you can't commit her. And I can't, you know, I stand back and I can't do anything. Payne says she tried to get her daughter help for years, pushing to go to Prairie St. John's, the state hospital in Jamestown, as well as various other programs in the Valley. But says each time either Andrea changed her mind or she didn't fit the criteria. Do you wish you would have pushed harder looking back now? Yeah, I keep wondering how, what, what, what further, how much did I have to drop her off at the footstep of the door? You know, did I, what did I need to do? What was where? I tried. I tried and talked, and I talked, and I talked, but how far does the talk go? Payne says both Andrea and main murder suspect Ethan Broad have been friends for years. Never once did I ever, ever fear for my safety with them kids, you know, never. Adding, while she feels both are good people, neither should have been living on their own without some sort of assistance. There was just a lot of things that were happening in that house that wasn't stable about it, you know, and something bad happened and they didn't know what to do. Payne says in no way is she excusing the gruesome acts against Destiny Avery. It's horrible. Nobody, nobody ever would deserve that, ever. Rather, she says more needs to be done to prevent people like Andrea Payne and Ethan Broad from falling through the cracks so incidents like Destiny's murder don't happen again. It's a terrible thing that's happened with all these kids, you know. I just feel so bad for all of them. Adding, while she's glad her daughter will now get the help she's always needed, Payne says it's devastating what had to happen in order for Andrea to get it. In Moorhead. Bailey Hurley, Valley News Live. Payne is currently being held on a half million dollar bond. She and the other three accused are set to be in court later next month. Two men were questioned, then released following a report of gunshots in Jamestown. It happened this morning in the northeastern part of the city. The men were said to be involved in a disagreement which led to the shots being fired. Police say there is no further risk to the public. Anyone with information is asked to call police at 701-252-2414. A 31-year-old woman is in jail, accused of stealing a tractor and trying to outrun police. It happened early this morning in the area of the 100th Avenue and 250th Street South near Holly. Deputies found the John Deere tractor on the move, but the driver refusing to stop. Deputies were able to direct Nicole Ray Cloud to drive the tractor into a swampy area. She was taken into custody on a number of charges, including motor vehicle theft. I was able to get outside this morning, really enjoyed the weather at the time, and the work I had to do was actually fun. Let's find out if that fun is still available for you tonight. Hutch is here with your first alert Thursday night weather planner. Hutch. Thanks so much. Beautiful conditions as we take a look in on our Luther family forward view out to the western sky. We're going to be treated with a very colorful sunset as the sunlight mingles with those high clouds over the valley. Nothing threatening here and temperatures soared today to near 80 degrees in the central Dakotas. Pier at 79, still 70 in Fargo. Some showers just north of the Minot area as we head into the evening hours. So we'll see some increasing clouds for all of our western counties as we forecast yesterday. But other than that, it looks very quiet with temperatures staying in the 60s most of your evening here in the FM area. Here's a look in on Grand Forks, gorgeous conditions there. Temperatures slipping into the 50s as we go through the overnight hours. We close out our work week in style. I'll have hour by hour details on some gusty conditions for your Friday, but warm ones as well here in a minute. Sounds fun to me.
Thanks. North Dakota has 34 more cases of the coronavirus, bringing the total to 1,067. The death toll in the state remains at 19. North Dakota's governor says he knows people are excited about tomorrow's reopening of businesses. Doug Burgum today reminded customers of their role moving forward. The person that you're interacting with may have a, uh, a family member that works in a long-term care situation. They may have a child uh, that's got an immunocompromised situation. And so, again, I think that one of the things of being North Dakota smart uh, is it has to also include a giant dose of empathy, understanding, patience, uh, and I would even go as far as say as, as love. The governor's restrictions will be lifted on most businesses starting tomorrow. Burgum says the move is being made because the state has made significant progress to contain the spread of the coronavirus. Minnesota Department of Health has confirmed a second case of COVID-19 within Monoman County and the White Earth Reservation. The person is being monitored by MDH. The department has contacted people that are deemed to be high risk and asking them to also self-quarantine for 14 days to monitor symptoms. Looking at the state of Minnesota, more than 70,000 cases have been completed. 5,136 people have been tested positive. 2,172 of those people no longer need to be in isolation. People in Minnesota will have to wait a little longer before the state's stay-in-order, stay-at-home order will be lifted. Governor Tim Walz extending the order for until May 18th. It was set to expire on Monday. Now, despite the extension, restrictions on retail businesses are being eased, and the governor is crediting Minnesotans for being responsible. I want to today, as we go through some of that, uh, call out that that sense of... Um, urgency and, and that sense of desperation around economic situation is real and validated. And why we are able to put those measures in, um, I still believe Minnesotans are finding a way not to force us to make a choice between public health and moving our commerce back into a functioning place. We can do both if you do it right. And Retailers are being asked to make a plan outlining what they would do and how they would handle the reopening following public health guidelines. They will be allowed to sell their inventory using curbside pickup and delivery beginning on Monday. The state is recommending everyone wears masks, including employees and customers. Hospitals in the area are reporting a 30 to 40 percent decrease in emergency room, urgent care and clinic visits. Ascension and Sanford say that this has resulted in non-COVID-19 patients coming, to, coming in sicker into their facility. A recently published study revealed routine medical tests and cancer procedures plummeted in the country starting in mid-March mid when stay-at-home orders went into place. And both hospitals say around that same time, the decline began at their facilities. We know there are patients out there that have yet have undetected cancers that their treatment is being delayed. Uh, the risk of contracting a COVID infection and getting seriously ill from it is much less than the risk of them not treating their acute illness. Sanford and Essentia both say that they have plenty of resources to deal with COVID-19 patients and regular patients. All employees at both places are also required to wear masks and their temperatures are screened before walking through the doors. I want to let you know about some road work starting on Monday in the Metro. Lanes on 25th Street South will be reduced between 5th and 17th Avenue South. Crews will be repairing concrete pavement. That job is expected to last two weeks. Also on Monday, contractors for the city of Fargo will set up traffic control for what's the first phase of reconstructing 10th Street North from 19th Avenue North to 28th Avenue North. Work will start at the 19th Avenue intersection and move north. Sidewalk access for businesses and residences will be open. Construction should be finished by late October. Later on Valley News Live at 6, times are tough for many cattle and hog farmers. We meet one who is facing a harsh reality because of the pandemic. What a range in temperatures today in Fargo, rising from the mid-30s to the low 70s. We saw 70s up and down the Red River Valley and parts of the central and eastern Dakotas. We have warm weather for Friday, too, but it comes with a hiccup. I'll spell it out right after this.